There is an invasion coming, and I have a prophetic warning concerning that invasion. Plus, there are nine prophetic end-time signs in the Christmas story that we're about to dive into right now. How many of you are ready to get into it right now? Luke chapter number one. Luke chapter number one. Here we go. Luke chapter one, and we'll begin with verse number 26. If you're there, say yes. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. I'm about to take you in 2023 to Nazareth. How many of you are excited about that? We're going, if you want information on how to go with us, go to EncounterIsrael.org. We're going to Israel and Greece and a five-star trip of a lifetime that's going to blow your mind, October 2023. And so they were in, in a city named Nazareth, verse 27, to a virgin, espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was? Mary and the angel came unto her and said hell thou art highly favored thou art highly favored thou art highly favored that's going to be important moving forward with the the Lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and when she saw him she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be and the angel said unto her fear not Mary for you have found favor with God and behold you shall conceive in your womb and shall bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus and he shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father's David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now, C.S. Lewis rightly stated and laid out that every generation has what they get right about Jesus, and every generation has what they get wrong about Jesus. And what you do then with that contradiction determines your success. So what do you do when you're faced with your own misconceptions of Jesus? What you do when you're faced with your own misconceptions of Jesus will determine your success in this life and in the coming life. Our future is determined by what we do when we're faced with a problem, when we realize that what we have thought about him is wrong. This is really important because religion refuses to accept error. It's very rigid. It's very wooden. It refuses to, it's not pliable. It's not bendable. It's not pliable in the hands of the potter. But what you do when you're faced with the reality that what I have thought about him is not who he is will determine your success in this life. When Jesus first came in his first advent, he was faced with a group of people who did not believe he was who he said he was because they had a conception that they refused to allow to change. What is your conception of Jesus? What is it that you believe about him? What is it that you've preached about him? What is it that you think you know of him? Because I can tell you this this right now. He is bigger than we have preached. He is bigger than we have prayed. Our praise, one of the reasons why they don't get answers is because they're too small for the greatness of our God and our King. You need to get your expectations up a little bit higher. Everybody say, pray bigger. Of course, it's not a matter of praying. It's a matter of praying right So when we look at the misconceptions that we've had concerning the first advent, I think it's very important that you kind of just just kind of shake that religious mindset right now because you need to recognize that when we look at the prophecies concerning his first advent, when we look at what took place during the Christmas story, we are seeing parallels and we are seeing preparation for his second advent. And we spent a lot of time talking about Jesus and his birth and zero time talking about how he's coming again when that is the entire purpose of his birth. All of creation and all of history's timeline has been leading to the culmination of human history and of the divine work of redemption. It's all been leading to this. His birth was just a means to an end. And today we're going to talk about the end. Now, the Bible says that he hides the end in the beginning. 
Yes? And so when you think that something is ending, when you think about an ending, God thinks about a beginning. Some of you think a certain part of your life is ending or a certain phase in your life is ending or a relationship is ending or this is coming to an end. No, no, no. You're not coming to an end. You're coming to a beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at everybody at your table and say there's a new beginning for you. Write new beginning in the comments because this is huge. This is huge. So when you think of an end, God thinks of a beginning. Now get this. When you think of a beginning... Come on. It's already done. When you think of a beginning, God is thinking of the ending. And on Christmas morning, when we think about shepherds showing up to see what was going on in this lowly manger, when we think of the magi and the wise men, and we think of this glorious beginning, all God can think about is the end. He begins with the end in mind. When you go to the book of Genesis, I can't wait in these college courses that we do when we get into eschatology. When you go into the book of Genesis, the first seven days of creation are prophetic outliers and prophetic harbingers of the last moments of human history. God hides the end in the beginning. The word advent, I want you to write that word down in your notes. I want you to write that word down in your notes, advent. It's a very liturgical word. It comes from the Latin. It means arrival. It means appearance. It means invasion. (laughs) We talk about the first advent, but I want to talk about the second advent. And the prophecies concerning and the harbingers concerning the second advent that are hidden in the first advent. But first, get it down. Advent means, it means arrival. It means appearance. And it means invasion. There is an invasion coming. There is an invasion coming of the glory of the Lord, of the majesty of the King of kings and the Lord of lords that's going to sweep out from north to south and east to west, and every eye shall see him. There is coming a moment soon and very soon when the black hairs on the head of damnation are going to grow white with horror as they realize that their time of reigning is over, and Jesus has come to bring life and life everlasting. I wonder, are you ready for that moment? Advent, put me in, coach. Advent, it's a word that often directs our minds back to a moment when the word became flesh. It speaks of the first arrival of Jesus, but that word not only speaks of his first arrival, it speaks of his second. For the prophecies or the story of Christmas found in Matthew, found in Luke, found in Micah, and many other verses... We see in these stories references here as we're talking about the birth of Jesus to his final rule and reign on this planet. For every eye will see him. It's all leading to this. Everybody say it's leading to this. For every one prophecy concerning his first advent, there are eight concerning his second advent. If you were to remove the discussion in the New Testament of the first advent, you would remove a a couple chapters, three, four, maybe five chapters in totality. But if you were to remove every chapter in the New Testament that mentions his second advent, you would hardly have a New Testament left at all. You would only have a few chapters left. Everything is leading to this. Everything is moving forward to this great and glorious morning when Jesus is going to set up his throne and rule and reign forever. But what can we learn about the second advent from the first? I'm going to give you nine prophetic signs. Are you ready? Get these done. Nine prophetic signs leading into the first advent advent that give us some parallels and some predictions about what's going to happen leading into the second advent. Number one, Jesus' first appearance was preceded by dreams and visions. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 2 says, In the last days I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. 
Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. And upon my servants and upon my handmaidens, in those days will I pour out of my spirit. There is about to be a ramping up, a hundredfold pouring out of supernatural dreams and visions from heaven. And I just want you right now to lift two hands up right now and close those eyes and say, Lord, pour it out on me right now. I want to be able to see you. I want to be able to hear you. I want to experience you in line with your word. Pour out dreams and visions. Lay the next year out before me with dreams and visions. Show me what is to come. Holy Spirit, come accomplish your purpose to show us things to come through dreams and through visions. And we will glorify you in them. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mary, Joseph, Zechariah, dreams and visions were poured out. Uh, the shepherds, dreams and visions poured out leading into his first advent, and that will be true leading into his second. Number two, Jesus' first appearance was preceded by a darkness that became defensive. So we see Herod politically positioning himself in order to maintain his authority. Leading into the second coming of Jesus Christ, the Antichrist spirit will be poured out in such a way those who are not attached to Jesus will be consumed by darkness and gross darkness the people and the leadership of this world will begin to propagate perverted legislation in an attempt to maintain their corrupt hold on power. Are we seeing it right now? What did this look like at the first advent? Abortion. As darkness wanted to maintain its hold, it had to kill children. And so there was an influx of the discussion of abortion at the first advent. At the second advent, there'll be an influx of abortion to snuff out any light that could come from every child is a potential Billy Graham. Every child is a potential E.V. Hill. Every child is a potential world changer. And the enemy, the, there, is, there is much to be said about the accumulated knowledge that comes within a generation. And when we eliminate life, we eliminate the knowledge, the strength, the joy, the help that they could have been to a world gone mad. So Jesus' first appearance was preceded by a darkness that became defensive. Are we seeing that happening right now? I would pull up EncounterNews.com and begin to lay out for you many, many, many. In fact, I'm going to do it right now, EncounterNews.com. In fact, if you've got your phone, you can pull it out too. Those of you watching online, you may not know, we have launched something called Encounter News where you can get all the end time and prophetic news that matters to you in one place. Hallelujah. Oh, look, they pulled it up on the screen. You guys are on it today. And it's not just news to tear you down. It's news to build you up. So we'll give you a few articles that will be like, oh, dear God in heaven. Then we'll give you another one that's like, praise God in heaven. Cambridge Dictionary joins Merriam-Webster with the woke definitions of man and woman. Ideological shadow banning was real even when Twitter denied it. In fact, the new owner of Twitter now says all of the conspiracy theories about Twitter were not only true, they were worse than what we originally thought. It was some 70% of those who voted for one particular party said that if certain news items would not have been banned, they would have voted differently if they would have known. 70%. Is darkness getting defensive? Toxicology experts warn, well, we better move on from that. Oh, my goodness. Church going in belief. It's all uncensored on EncounterNews.com. Church going in belief in God at historic lows, look at this, despite the mega church surge. So church attendance skyrockets as spirituality declines. The Blessed Hope of Christmas, you need to read that one. You need to read The Blessed Hope of Christmas. 
Twitter files overshadow Pope Francis' resignation already signed in case of, in case of uh, a medical problem. Trump hosts same-sex marriage celebration with Carrie Lake. We are unbiased on EncounterNews.com. Amy Grant hosts same-sex wedding. All I want for Christmas is for Christian musicians to have some sense. An atmosphere of lawlessness attacks on churches nearly triple in four years. Persecution in the world today is the highest it has ever been. More people have been killed in the last year for their faith than in the last 2,000 years. In the last century, there have been more moderns, martyrs for Christianity than in the last 2,000 combined because darkness is becoming defensive. You want to talk about a group of people that need protection. You want to talk about a group of people who need to not feel marginalized. The most persecuted group of people on the planet are Christians. Bless you. <laughs> well, let's get to the next one. The first appearance of Jesus was preceded by, get this, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But Pastor Allen, I thought that didn't happen until Acts chapter 2. But if you read the Christmas story, a pregnant Mary walks into the room with a pregnant Elizabeth. And the Bible said that the baby leaped in her womb and was filled with the Holy Spirit. I believe there's going to be a lot of jumping and a lot of wombs leading into the second coming of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. A mighty outpouring of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, even greater than the charismatic renewal where Baptists and Methodists and Catholics and Presbyterians and Church of Christ and maybe if we pray, even Pentecostals will really get a heaping double dose of the real thing. You didn't get the baptism of the Holy Spirit just so you could t t t t talk in tongues. You got the baptism of the Holy Ghost so you could be a witness uh, from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the uttermost parts of the earth. I believe leading into the second advent, we're going to see some mighty warriors, remnant believers rise up and begin to declare, thus saith the Lord, and they could care less what the world thinks about it. We're preaching to an audience of one. Hallelujah. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. People say it's American Bible prophecy. I don't know, but it is in Bible promises. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, that refers to America as much as it does anybody. That refers to the UK as much as it does anybody. I believe that there is about to be some firebrands that rise up in the United Kingdom and they're going to have a glory on them that is going to tear down the previous walls that have been erected to protect people from hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay. Let's go to the next one. This is important. The first appearance of Jesus was preceded by the literal fulfillment of prophecy. This is important. Because when we look to the second coming, we wonder, are these prophecies spiritual? Are they allegorical? What could they mean? What is the real meaning? It couldn't possibly true be true that Israel will become a nation again, so spiritually it must mean something else. It couldn't be possible true that not only would Israel become a nation again, but that it would be born in a day, as the Bible predicted. That could not be possible, so it must be something spiritual. That's what they thought for nearly 2,000 years until May the 15th. 1948, when the gavel came down in the inner chambers of the United Nations, and for the first time in history, a nation and a people that had been scattered, as the Jewish people had been scattered, were reconstituted and galvanized, and in a day became a nation again. What are we learning? What, what, what should we learn? 300 prophecies concerning his first advent, and all of them came to pass literally exactly as they were laid out. And if that's the way it was for the first advent, that's the way it's going to be for the second advent. Yeah. Yeah. 
literally, verifiably. They thought, well, the Bible says that he'll come riding on a donkey. That's unusual. That has to be allegorical. It means in humility, it means he's going to ride in. No, 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 no. Imagine the shock and awe when he rode in. <laughs> born in Bethlehem. What? Bethlehem? That's like born in Albemarle. He's not going to be born in Albemarle. That just, that, what that really means is he's just going to be of lowly spirit and he's going to be humble. And then bam. In a small place. Could God do big things in a small place? Come on, ECC. Could God do big things in a small place? I'm going I'm to tell you about big things in a small place. Get this, get this. Over the last year, and the numbers have already changed. They've already skyrocketed up. In the last year, we have preached and ministered the equivalent of a century of ministry. <laughs> through, our, through the media ministry of this church, 100 plus years of ministry. If we preach 24 hours a day, seven days a week, nonstop for 100 years, that would not even equal what we did this year at ECC. Yeah. Bethlehem. Yeah. These prophecies of his first advent were fulfilled literally. He would be counted among the transgressors. And yet we see him hanging on a cross between two thieves. Psalm 22 lays out a perfect description of the execution and the humiliation that he would endure. Centuries before him, that form of execution was ever, even invented. Spiritually, what that means is, and they, they get in their ivory towers of theological mishmash. No, 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 no. You know, the, the replacement theology of, of Israel being replaced by the church, this is what the book of Romans actually addresses. Many believe when you get to Romans chapters 9 through 11, there you have the central core of the book of Romans. Because in Romans you have a Gentile church that began to build the church. Can I just teach just for a second here? The Gentile church began to build with the Hebrew church, with the Jewish people, but then in Rome the Jews were cast out of that region. And then the Romans and those Gentiles began to build the church without them. And they thought, well, we don't even need them anyway. And so the book of Romans was written to bridge the gap because what happened was the Jews were banished from that region of Rome and then sometime later they were allowed back in and they come back into a church that now says we don't need you, all that Jewish stuff, we don't need anything to do with that stuff. And the book of Romans is written to bring these two groups together. That's the purpose of it. And so when you get to 9 through 11, you're getting to the heart of the book of Romans. And there in Romans, when he talks about the casting away of the Jewish people because they rejected the Messiah, and he said, how glorious is it for us that they were cast away, that the whole world might be saved. And then he says, if you think that's something, if you think the casting away of the Jewish people brought glory, wait till you see what happens when they're brought back in to the fold how much more glorious will that be for the whole wide world and so what happened was since there's all these allusions and references to the state of israel to the third temple to the jewish people we begin to allegorize that because there's no way the jewish people could ever come back there's no way they could ever recapture israel no way they could ever become a nation again until they did so in the same way the prophecies were fulfilled for his first advent, literally, they're going to be fulfilled literally for his second advent. Let's go to the next one. Jesus' first appearance was preceded by angelic intervention. The movement of angels dramatically increased as the proximity of his presence got closer and closer. The movement, the activity of angels with Joseph, with Mary, with Zechariah. The movement of angels bringing messages. Now listen to me. I, I believe that we're, we're not in a position to command angels. Do you understand me? Nowhere in the Bible do you see anybody commanding an angel. But the word commands angels. And when you speak the word, that word is taken by angelic beings as a command. So you don't say, Angel Fred, I command you, go do this for me. 
They don't listen to you. You're not their boss. But the word is their boss. And when you declare the word, they salute, hop to, and begin to do exactly what the word has commanded them to do. I believe there's going to be angelic intervention. And I believe many of you have already entertained angels unaware. Okay, let's get through these. All right, next one. Are you ready? One person is ready. Are you ready? The first appearance of Jesus was preceded by an unusual understanding of and attention to the heavens. The magi. The concentration on the star. An unusual understanding of the heavens. I believe in the second advent. The Bible predicts that there will be signs in the heavens. I believe that we would see in the last days an unusual fascination with and an understanding of the heavens. Elon Musk attempting to put a colony on Mars. An unusual understanding. Is that a sign or what? An unusual understanding of the heavens. Hmm. Jesus' first appearance was preceded by an unusual understanding of the heavens, but it was also preceded by a time of prayer. Go to Luke chapter 2 very quickly. Luke chapter 2. Not just prayer. Prayer, fasting, and church attendance. Luke chapter number 2. And let's look at verse number... 36. Let's go to 36. Those of you watching online, make sure you share this message. I think this is important that as we celebrate the first advent, that we understand that the second is coming soon and very soon. And there was one Anna, a prophetess. Wait a second. I thought women couldn't preach in church. I thought women couldn't be prophets. Stanley County, y'all lied to me. They lied to the world. And there was one Anna, a prophetess. We'll just tear that verse out. We'll just deal with that later. (laughs) Of the the tribe of Assershe. Does that sound right? That's what you get when you put women in charge. (laughs) Names like that. Asser. Is that what it says on yours? Must. Huh? Where or whatever was of a great age. We'll edit that out. And he lived, (laughs) just a joke, and he lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. Now, this is important when we get to the second aspect, but I want it to be said that as we approach, here's what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. They were already doing it in Hebrews. And even the more so as you see that day, what day? The second advent. As you see that day approaching, stick close to the gathering and the assembling of believers. I believe as we get to the last days, we're going to get a passion for gathering together once again. But it's not everybody, it's a remnant. It's a remnant that's going to get a passion for that, for prayer, for gathering together, assembling together, for fasting. Here's the next thing that's really important. Jesus' first appearance was accomplished in phases. Now, prophecy is pattern. Write that down. Write that down. We'll talk about it extensively in the future. Prophecy is pattern. Many prophetic words are not simply, thus saith the Lord. A, a, a prophetic word, so to speak, could be a pattern that we see throughout history that is prophetic because he foretells what is coming. Yes? So we, when we see, for example, the deliverance of the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage, that is a foretelling of the deliverance of all of us from the bondage of sin and iniquity. It's very prophetic, going through the water of the Red Sea, baptism, up into the promised land, the promises and the glory of God. It's forth-telling. When we see what was accomplished in the book of Judges, this constant cycle, each event was forth-telling of the next event. If there's one thing we've learned from history, it is that we do not learn from history. And those who don't learn from history are doomed to 
repeated. The first advent of Christ happened in phases. His conception, only few were privy to that. Only a few were able to get a hold of that and be a part of that and celebrate that. His birth, just a few more were a part of that. His time here on the earth, a few more. 12 years of age, a few more. 30 years of age, more. 33, more. Phases. Phases. So his first coming happened in phases. It is safe to assume his second coming will happen in phases. That those who have committed themselves to the gathering and the assembling of the believers, those who have committed themselves to prayer and to fasting, will be privy to some things before everyone else is. Hallelujah. Phases. So that's the reason why we must approach end-time prophecy with humility. When you look at Isaiah, if I'm not mistaken, chapter 61, it is what Jesus quoted when he first preaches in Luke chapter number 4, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he sat down. And he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. It was accomplished, but what you don't know if you don't go back and read Isaiah 61 is that he stopped in the middle of a verse. Right in the middle, when it gets to the day of the vengeance of our God, he closes the book, which if you would have read that verse, you'd have said this is one event. Right? One verse, contextually, this is one event, but it wasn't. It's happening in phases. So ultimately, we must let the Lord do what he wants to do, how he wants to do it. I'm going to give you one more, one more sign. Go to Matthew chapter number 25. Matthew chapter 25. Hallelujah. Then we're going to have a special gathering in the fellowship hall to celebrate Christmas. Matthew 25. Are you guys enjoying this online and in the building? Hallelujah. Somebody text amen if you're getting this in the comments. Matthew chapter 25. Jesus' first appearance was accomplished in a time and in a manner they were not expecting. Prophecy's pattern. They were not expecting their Messiah to show up as a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. They were not expecting their Messiah to be God incarnate, which here's another prophetic prediction. He, he came in the flesh. He will return in the flesh. It's interesting that when he first arrived, that the all-inspiring power of God Almighty was encapsulated in flesh and blood. He had skin, he had hair, he had fingernails. God had to clip his fingernails. It's wild. Such, such a man that it was even difficult for his family to understand who he was. His brother, Jude, as we discussed previously, completely missed the first part of the ministry of Jesus because he, he believed in the miracles that were going on, but he didn't understand the message, thought it was a little too radical. And it wasn't until later that he came on the scene and wrote that tremendous epistle that even his family rejected him because he was man. He was just, he was such a man that it's, it's hard to imagine he is God. And yet he was all God, all by himself. And one of the most startling events in all of the ministry of Jesus, if not in all of human history, even in comparison to the resurrection, is when they're talking with Jesus on the Mount of Olives, and then all of a sudden he begins to rise off of the ground. Even compared to the fact that he had come back from the dead, they had seen Lazarus come back from the dead, but they'd never seen a man fly. And he begins to rise up off of the ground. This man, this flesh and blood with bones and skin and fingernails is now rising, defying the laws of gravity. 
rising into the air, and they just stand there in bewilderment as he disappears to the point that angels say, hey, hey, why are you standing here gazing for this same Jesus will come again in the same way he just left you? He left in flesh and blood, and he's coming back as flesh and blood to rule and to reign forever and forever. But all of this was beyond what they expected, and this is a prophecy. Look at what it says here in Matthew chapter number 25, and oh, let's look at verse number 13. If you there, say yes. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. His first arrival came in a way and in a manner and in a time that was completely unexpected. His second advent will be in a way, in a manner, in a time that will be completely unexpected by those who are in darkness. But you children are not of the dark, that that day should overtake you unaware. You are children of the light, so put on the armor of God. Put on the helmet of salvation, the hope of the salvation that is to come, that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand there for. Everybody stand up on your feet with me. Stand up on your feet with me. Hallelujah. Listen, you may be tuning into this and your relationship may not be right with the Lord. There were many whose relationship was not right with him when he came the first time and they missed it. Don't miss the second. You may have missed the first. Don't miss the second. There's an urgency in my spirit concerning the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. The second advent is upon us. We must prepare ourselves. With every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around, those of you watching online, bow your heads as well. If you say, Pastor Allen, I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be prepared. For when Jesus returns, because just as assuredly as he came the first time, exactly as the Bible predicted, he's coming a second time. If you say, I want to be ready, raise your hand in the air. One, two, three, raise in the air right now, right now. Lift it up, lift it up. Those of you watching online, lift your hands up in the air. Father, we come before you now, and we worship you. Just begin to worship him and thank him that he has accomplished his word and his will thus far, and he is not going to leave us or forsake us. For the rest of his word is going to be accomplished. The rest of his will is going to be accomplished exactly as he said it. And we want to be a part of it. Now lift those hands and worship him. Lift those hands and talk to him. An argument could be made that the entire purpose of his first advent was to fulfill the prophecies. Was to accomplish the word. And can I tell you, he's going to accomplish everything else that was written concerning him too. You are not outside of the narrative of God. You're right smack dab in the middle of it. Now listen, the canon is closed, but the narrative, the story is not. You are a part of the greatest moment in human history. Just lift those hands and say this with me. Say this out loud. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you today, and I thank you for sending your son to die for me, but I want to be ready for him to reign in me. I want to be ready for Jesus to lord over this earth by making him lord of my life. I repent right now of every sin. I cast it away. I turn from my old man and I turn to God. I'm ready to be an end time watching warrior for Jesus Christ. Use me, Lord. Use me. And I thank you for doing it. I worship you and I thank you for doing it. I worship you and I thank you that there's no sin that I've committed. Come on, in your own words, just begin to worship him and thank him that there's no sin that's big enough, bad enough, that if I repent and turn from it and allow the blood of Jesus to cover it, that I can't walk away from and become more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens me. I 
thank you that I am not disqualified from being a part of your army. I thank you that I can be a part of this great end time move of your spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Would you put your hands together and bless the Lord for about 20 seconds. Hallelujah from South Africa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now as we thank him for giving his best gift by sending his son into the earth, it is time to give our gifts. It's time for this morning's tithes and offerings. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Get your tithes and offerings in your hand. Those of you watching online, we're so thankful to have you with us. And I want you to sow into what it is you've received today. We have a very special offer for you, a two-CD set, two sets of CDs, 14 CDs, so nearly 14 hours of teaching called Arm to Prosper is the new special offer where you're going to get Fish Come First CD set and the Armed CD set with it. And that's for a gift of any size. Hallelujah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. So go to EncounterToday.com to get that. Listen, the Terminal 2023 registrations are already full. Hallelujah. Isn't that exciting? So you can't get in the building, but you can get online. We're doing a private live stream, and you can join us by going to ncrevival.com to get more information about how you can get access to the private live stream. And then beginning in January, we're going to begin a series live on YouTube on the book of Revelation verse by verse. Begin a series. We're continuing a series. We've already begun. It took us like a year to get through what we got through, and we're going to dive back into it, and I'll do a refresher uh, the first Sunday in January, so you're going to want to be a part of that amazing verse-by-verse -verse teaching of the book of Revelation, and uh, it's going to be amazing for everybody in the house and for everybody online. How many of you are excited about what's coming, and how many of you love our online audience? We love you guys. Merry Christmas. We'll see you next time. Hallelujah. How you leave one year is how you go into the next. Prepare the way of the Lord for your 2023 by joining us at the Terminal Prophetic New Year Gathering, Friday, December 30th. We'll be joined by Chris and Daniel Burns, who'll be leading us in worship. Skylar Farley, who'll be speaking to the next generation, and I'll be sharing a prophetic word for the new year. Don't miss this dynamic event. Registration is free. Go to ncrevival.com.